Welcome to Club Synergy. If you haven't been here, this place is fabulous. You'll notice we have a variation on that dance floor script. We've got this record, which if you drop on, aligns itself and starts spinning, plays some music. We've even got this little wireless mic, which you can talk into by pulling down the trigger. And now my voice is global, talking to everybody now. Very cool. We've also got this cool party popper. <laughs> that is too much fun. And we've got a whole slew of records back here. And so today I'm gonna to be showing you how we made these records that pop into place, start spinning, and play music. <coughs> also really good Frisbees. I mean, they can be. Yeah, did you see that thing go? Like, I've got a great record called Burial. <laughs> oh my goodness, that flies so well. Let's start by looking at the record. You'll notice that it's just a singular object and inside we have a trigger. Now this trigger is the brains of the operation. When the trigger interacts with this spindle, it's tagging objects named record. And so we've named the center here record and you'll notice we've actually put one underneath. So this bottom one is the one that we're using and the top one is just for looks. So this one's non-collidable, and this is the one that's actually setting off the trigger, which is why the trigger goes down so much. From there, that trigger is tied into one of our five records. So each record has its own accompanying soundtrack. If we come down into our variables, you'll see we only have four variables. We have the sound effect that we're tagging to, the full record which tags the object itself, so including the trigger inside of it, we have the rotate by, how much are we rotating by, and how much do we need to teleport up. Uh, so this is a vector that we didn't really need, but I kind of wanted to make it easy to adjust. And so I'll show you how that works in just a second. The first thing you're going to note is when trigger is entered by object, so that's when that trigger enters the object below on the record player, we move to the position of that object plus that vector up by, which allows us to move up just slightly so it doesn't, because you know that object is underneath, and so we have to go up just slightly. And so that was a number I played with until I got it right. And then we do that on the full record. We then play the sound effect, which is our music. We then send event my2 to self. What my2 does is it's a loop that basically loops rotation by or rotate by over a 0.1 second delay on the full record and it does that constantly. And then when the trigger exits, we stop sound on sound effects and we cancel sending my two. So since we have some extra time, I'd love to go through some of these other things like how did we get this microphone to work? Very simple. All we're doing is we're running this script on the microphone and it says when event index trigger with player is pressed, we then set voice settings for that player to global and when the trigger is released, we set that player's voice settings back to the normal for that environment. And that is how you create a microphone that works. It's very simple to do and is great if you have a local space like this where you want to be able to talk to everybody and also have it be personal talking spaces, but you just need to give an announcement or if you're doing a hosting an event, that's how you do that. The next thing I wanted to show you was how we did our confetti and our air horn. Now this air horn is actually pretty similar to our microphone in that we're using the same index trigger press by player. So when you press the index trigger on the air horn, it stops the sound effect and then plays the sound effect, which is this one right here, which is just an air horn sound effect. So we're running it on the full object, which we've made grabbable, and then we've tied it into the sound effect, which is located inside of that object. What we have happening here is when the world started, we connect confetti cannon index trigger press to local event index trigger pressed. So the confetti script is running on each of the FX, and then it's tagged to the actual confetti cannon object. So it knows when the trigger is pressed on the air horn, and then when the event index trigger is pressed by the player, we then stop visual effects on the confetti, and we play visual effects on that confetti. In case you forgot what that looked like, <laughs> it's so much fun. I really love this confetti cannon. You'll notice that there's a few that are tied into the cannon itself, so into this uh, air horn object, but you'll also notice there's one that comes right out of here from the front of the stage, and it's just really sweet. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Absolute pleasure. Huge shout out to Club Synergy. I am loving this place. It's been so much fun to work on. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask, and I look forward to seeing the next one. Bye! 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 What is the unnamed record? Nice. Cool tones.